African Safari Wildlife Park is a wild experience with over 800 exotic animals. Our drive through safari features giraffes, zebras, deer, elk, alpacas, and even white bison, all of which you can feed right from your vehicle. Walk on the wild side with the Zoodal Pass and feed kangaroos, porcupines, tortoises, and rabbits. Step into our aviary adventure and hand feed budgies for a memorable experience. Check out our live educational shows or ride a camel. Create memories that will last a lifetime at the Ohio Safari Park, African Safari Wildlife Park in Port Clinton. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Morning Show right here on the new Main Street TV. Jennifer here, of course, to start off the morning program with our good friend and newsman, Phil Buffington. Hello. What's up? Living the dream. You know, poor Phil <laughs> drew the short straw today and has to do the show with me all day long <laughs> for a whole hour. Uh, there could be a lot worse. Congrats. Thanks. I'm very, very happy. <laughs> and of course, our friend and and intern, uh, Jenna Smalley, is here behind the scenes. Hi, Jenna. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> She's so cute. And uh, no, welcome to the program. We're happy that you're here. <clears throat> and uh, Phil, you know, you and I, you haven't been here for a little while, mm -hmm. and you and I haven't talked a lot, so... And I know you cover the news, and Pete comes up and does the morning news update sometimes. Uh, but, you know, you get to cover some different areas that Pete doesn't get to cover. And um, so I just wanted to pick your brain on, you know, what are, what are some of the things that are going on in our area that you have gotten to see and report uh, lately? Um, well, right before we started, we were talking about the... Uh the electric fence saga in the city of Wellston. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the electric fence saga of 2021, yes. yes. It finally, uh, that, that finally got resolved. Um, that was the dispute between the Shawls and Dave's Custom Butchering's mm -hmm. owners there on West Broadway Street in Wellston. Um, well, it's kind of a two-part saga. Yeah, it, it, it's not completely done. The yep. fence, the fence portion is, is one now saga done. complete. Yeah, <laughs> saga two remains. Yes. So the whole issue was uh, Randy Shaw, who lives um, in close proximity to Dave's Custom Butchering, took issue with the fact that the company installed an electric fence around their property, and were keeping a certain number of cattle there, um, which were you know going to be slaughtered eventually. Um, mm. They're, are the cattle there right now? Like, are I'm there not, cattle there? I'm not sure. I've driven by there a few times. I haven't really seen any. I didn't um, think that they had cattle at this time. They like, made it seem like if they do, it's only a certain number, like a small number, and they're only there for... To be know, held to... Yeah, yeah. Just to keep... It's the fences to keep them out of the road. Yes. Um, but there were, and probably still are, several um, codified ordinances in the city of Wellston that don't necessarily conflict one another but are confusing and one in particular was a section I think it was 94.05 that deals heavily in sidewalks and streets that for some reason had a wayward section about um, electric fences and said that you couldn't have any electric fences anywhere in the corporation limits of the city of Wellston so um, in order to uh, there was another section also um, that deals with fences in particular. They kind of contradicted it, right? Right. Yeah. So they had three <laughs> readings on, on an ordinance to completely repeal that section 94.05 of the city's codified ordinances, which they approved um, at the last meeting of council, which was just a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Um, so people can now have electric fences in city limits. Now. So it's not just Dave's, it's any, no, anybody. Anywhere. anywhere. Okay. So you could have one on Monument Square if you want. But this didn't pass unanimously. There were two councilmen that weren't there that night, but the measure still passed uh, three to two, I believe it was. Okay. Um, and one of the dissenting council members was uh, Rick Hudson, who is the mayor's brother. Um, okay. And he just, he didn't, he didn't like the, the idea of having um, those types of fences in town because he said it was dangerous, especially to children. Um, but it still passed. Now the second okay. part of this is keeping livestock in the city of Wellston. 
um, within the city limits. This is number two saga, yes. Yes, yes. So, you know, in addition to Mr. Shaw having an issue with the electric fence, which he said was as close as 17 feet from his pool deck, he also took, mm -hmm. um, took issue with the fact that they were keeping cattle and livestock in, in the city limits. Um, so right now it's at the committee level still, but uh, council members are trying to draft legislation that the, the mayor says is going to be fair for everyone involved. It addresses not only the inner portions of the city, but the outskirts, like what we're talking about on West Broadway Street toward the, um, toward the corporation limits. Okay. And also addresses the fact that some kids have 4-H projects in the city. So there's a lot to yeah. it. Um, there's all these little, like, outliers that yeah. you don't think of like the 4-H projects and stuff yeah. like that it's like oh well the one the one thing that I thought was interesting when when uh, Mayor Hudson talked about it at the last meeting he said even in the city of Columbus and I think I said this last time I was up here even in the city of Columbus there's an ordinance that says you can have um, one head of cattle per I can't remember how many acres Mm -hmm. But he basically said, you know, if it's if it's something that can be accommodated in the city of Columbus, then I'm pretty sure that outlying portions, especially in Wilson, can can be taken care of. Especially here in rural, yeah. you know, Ohio, where yeah. we are an agricultural um, county, and I'm not taking sides. I'm just saying there's a lot of 4-H projects out there, and people that need to have have them. It's easier to have them at their home, yeah, yeah. than you know, go somewhere else. So yeah. Yeah, that's that's another one coming up. I imagine he said it would be within a month when they presented that legislation. It'll go through three readings, I, I assume, just to allow everybody the opportunity to come in and speak their piece if they decide to. Um, but yeah, that that I wanted to follow up on that because I've talked about it so many times with well, you. Well, and it is such a and it, one of the big stinks about this was that Dave's has been there bef since before Wellston has been there. Yeah. So it's like, wait a minute, here are you? How do you make rules after the fact? Right. Um, and so I think that that's a fair um, argument or at least thing to address. And it should be noted too that Randy Shaw and his wife have lived at that property, he said, for over a decade and hasn't had the first problem with, with the, the business until now. So it isn't like this is something that this guy's living in misery and, you know, they've gotten right. along just fine up until the fence thing. And okay. Unfortunately, not everybody can be made happy in a situation like this. Well, it's, somebody's going to be upset and somebody's... Yeah. That's just part of being an elected official. You have to make the uh, unfavorable decisions sometimes. But in this case, um, Dave's is allowed to have their fence and we'll see what happens with the livestock. I would imagine they're going to accommodate that as well. Um, and it's not necessarily them picking a business over a guy. I think it's just... They want to be fair for everybody is yeah. the way they presented it well and it's really hard to ban you know to, to you can't do a blanket thing because of the 4-h projects and all of that and and you're right there's probably a lot of you know little kids in town that have bunnies or you know whatever and where do you stop with livestock versus you know you can't say well bunnies are allowed and cows aren't or you know goats are and cows aren't like it's man i ooh. Yeah, I, this is why I commend people. I really do that run for public office because it's a thankless job. It really is, and I mean, much like being uh, a reporter for a newspaper, you usually don't hear <laughs> the good things that you do. Right. You usually just hear when you make a mistake and look like an idiot, <laughs> or have it. somebody really mad at you for reporting the the truth, even if it's the truth. Yeah, when you repeat the things that they said, <laughs> <laughs> how dare you! Or the facts that you that you've been given. Yeah. But, um, that's a whole other that's a whole other story for sure. Um, well, okay. Well, I did wonder, and and I had asked Phil when he came up if if anything had come up with that. So I appreciate the update on that because no problem. It's just one of those things that you're like, oh man, this is a no win situation. Yep. So and yeah. Aside from that, um, I do try to keep a close eye on. Um, the court system and what's going yes. on, especially through uh, the common police court now that things are picking back up and they're getting back into the swing of things mm -hmm. uh, post COVID. Um, the second party in the um, double murder case from last year um, that saw the first defendant, Lonnie Sheets, get um, the max sentence um, is about to have its second party 
tried at the end of this year. It's going to be mid-December when Lisa Sheets goes on trial in Jackson County Common Police Court. Um, why, why the big gap in time? I'm not really sure. Um, okay. I don't know why it got pushed out so far. Um, it's going to be interesting though because this, this same case has already been tried once. I've never, I've never seen that. Um, so all the facts have already been presented. There's not really, I don't think, any new testimony that's going to be presented. But it will be a different jury. A different and jury and a different defendant. Different defendant. Yeah. Do they have the same attorney? No. So um, different attorneys as well. Different attorneys. Oh boy. Uh, Lonnie was represented by Bob Toy, who's based out of Athens, and I believe Lisa is represented by Richard Nash, who is out of Portsmouth. Okay. Um, it will have the same prosecution team, which consisted of Special Prosecutor Christopher Kinsler out of Columbus, out of the Attorney General's office, and Assistant Prosecuting Attorney here in Jackson County, Colleen Williams. Okay. Um, will be representing the state. So it's set for, I believe it's set to start um, December 13th mm -hmm. and last through December 23rd. That doesn't mean it'll last that long. Mm -hmm. And I would say That's the first- That's what they've allotted, right. the time they've allotted for right. it. Right. Yeah. And I'd say the first day or two will just be jury selection and jury instruction. Yeah. Um, which at this point, finding an impartial jury to see in a case that's already been tried once, I <laughs> imagine it's going to be kind of difficult. That might be, yes. Maybe that's why they pushed it out so long. I don't know. Um, but we'll, uh -huh. we'll keep you posted on that. She's charged with uh, uh, basically the same charges as Lonnie. I think she had six total, except hers are complicity too, whereas he was actually charged and convicted of the murders. So she has two counts of complicity to aggravated murder, two counts of complicity to aggravated attempted murder, Okay. Um, complicity to felonious assault and tampering with evidence. Remind me what he was sentenced to. I don't. I don't remember um, that. For the, they even modified one of his charges at the end. So I think the first charge was actually a complicity to aggravated murder, also. Um, but he got sentenced to um, the maximum penalty on the first two, the aggravated murder charges. Those are life sentences. Okay. Um, and then I think. Two of the two of the charges were Reagan Tokes cases where there's a, a minimum uh, prison sentence for these, so they vary. Yeah. So I think it was between eight and eleven years, but basically he's going to be in prison for the rest of his life. Okay. He was charged separately for each count, um, and they were consecutive rather than concurrent. Um, and each of the firearm specifications that he had on these cases also carried an additional three-year sentence. Oh, man. So, yeah, it okay. racked up quite a bit. Now, what would she be facing if convicted? I believe the complicity to aggravated murder charge has the possibility of life without parole. Oh, believe, really? Because I believe wow. that's the, the first charge that Lonnie was ultimately charged with, or uh, convicted of, rather. Um, so I believe she there is a possibility that she could do life as well. I'd have to double check that, but it's a possibility. So her charges would be, just so I understand this um, in our discussion, her charges would be like she was there on the scene but didn't actually pull the trigger kind right. of thing. She aided and abetted. So there, okay. they, the majority, I think almost every one of her counts specifies that where Lonnie was convicted of using a 32 caliber pistol to murder David Yeely and Tabitha Sheets and attempted to murder his brother. Mm -hmm. She assisted him in acquiring the weapon and acquiring the ammunition and drove both to pick up the weapon and ammunition oh, and to the scenes. I gotcha. So she was there. Okay. Um, but no, she's not so accused she of actually doing it. Yeah. Like I'm not, so what they're saying is she wasn't an innocent bystander, like she was just there. Right. Like they feel as if, okay, that makes sense. They have. They have lots of evidence. I mean, they have video footage from outside of the um, the gun store. With it's 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 kind of tricky. They show the vehicle pull up, and they see Lonnie get out of the passenger side. He gets out of the passenger side of Lisa's vehicle, so they assume that she was the one in the driver's seat. Although you never see her get out of the vehicle. I see. And then there are witnesses that attest to the fact that she was at the scene that night on um, Ohio Avenue in Oak Hill and at the ATM that night when they took the now deceased Rebecca Montgomery to get money for methamphetamine. Um, so she's placed at the scene by several people and testimony's already been given that she was there. 
Okay, so I feel like doing this program for a really long time, it's like when I go to the Jackson County Fair and interview kids with their projects, I have a really hard time interviewing the horse projects because I already know the answers. Yeah, yeah. And I almost feel like it would be hard to, to try a case that's already been tried once and, and, and be like go through all of the questions and the specifics and explain it when you know that everyone already knows like I feel like stuff could get missed I'm not I'm not saying it will I'm just saying that just seems to me to be way more complicated than starting from scratch yeah. and yeah and presenting a, a whole new case it's it's one of those things you don't see very often I would imagine right I mean, I'm not in there every day but I've I've been around the court system and law enforcement most of my whole life um, yeah. And I don't really ever remember this happening. Huh. It's a good opportunity for the prosecution to do an even better job than they did the first time. But this sure. is a new defense team. They are able to go back and watch, you know, and see how uh, Attorney Toy handled it. Uh, maybe go over some things that he didn't. Um, but, yeah, it's Yeah, it's that's definitely, almost like, like being a team and watching the, yeah. the tapes of the game, yeah. you know, the previous game. Yep. Wow. And... Uh, speaking huh. of unprecedented legal actions, um, I will say another case in common police court right now involves a defendant by the name of James Bowman, who is accused of multiple counts of um, having sex with a minor. Um, so there's, you know, rape, gross sexual imposition, uh, child pornography related charges. Now this, I. I believe he's in his mid-twenties. He's from Jackson, has a Jackson address. Okay. Um, so he's approaching his trial date. He was being represented by local attorney Mike Moore. Okay. Um, and now, of course, Mr. Moore is also indicted on charges similar to what Mr. Bowman is. Mm -hmm. Now, in light of that, recently in one of the court proceedings, uh, Assistant Prosecutor Williams didn't put it forth in a motion citing case law or anything in particular, but she did make a notice to the court saying that the state didn't necessarily want to offer up some of the evidence, um, namely pictures um, of child pornography, to Attorney Moore considering the charges he's currently facing. Now, I have never in my life seen anything like this happen. And wow, that's a tangled web. It is. And it was addressed in open court by Judge Regan um, recently. Okay. And he basically told Ms. Williams that it needed to be presented in a formal motion that cites case law that says, you know, ABC, this is why he can't have these discovery items. Well, she basically said that she wasn't aware of any specific case law where that's, you know, defined because this is fairly unprecedented. I don't believe it's ever been addressed. How, yeah, how do you do that if, if it's never happened before? I don't know. Interesting. So, uh, you know, in keeping up with the Court View uh, website, I haven't seen any formal motion be presented by the prosecution. Um, however, I did see that mm -hmm. as of the 14th, um, Mr. Bowman's legal representation is now Tricia Kimes Brown, who works with Mr. Moore. Yes. Um, so I don't know why that took place. I don't know if it's because um, Mr. Moore decided he didn't want, you know, any more pressure on himself or others. Right. Um, felt that his client would be best, you know, suited to be represented by his um, legal partner, Tricia Kimes Brown. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Um, but I do know that that is where that is now. And he's still awaiting his, his trial date. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. Um, in Mr. Moore's case, um, I believe, I'm not sure when his trial date is, is set for, if it's been set, but it, it's been pretty quiet <laughs> since. Sorry. Bless you. I told you. I since was telling him beforehand, I've, this allergy <laughs> thing is making me crazy today. I, like, anyway, sorry. No, I you're apologize. Fine. You're fine. But yeah, it, we'll have to wait and see when his trial date is. Um, so there's nothing new on that that you know of? Not yet. I believe there's a motions hearing and maybe a pre-trial conference set for later this month on the 22nd. Okay. Woo! Yeah, that's just a couple things. So. Yikes. Yeah. How do you keep all that in your head? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know.
I can remember things like that, but I can't remember if I ate lunch <laughs> or if I put the right socks on. I know. <laughs> Did I brush my teeth? Today? I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, I feel you. Well, I'll tell you what, let's uh, pause for a moment. And Jenna, do you have the weather ready? Okay, let's head on over to the weather forecast. And today is actually looking a little bit cooler. Um, it's actually going to be an absolutely fantastic day with sunny skies and highs around 76 degrees. For tonight, mostly clear and pretty cool overnight. Lows around 49. And then tomorrow, a lovely day as well with your sunshine and highs around 82. So enjoy these next few days. A few showers popping into the forecast on Saturday and uh, perhaps Friday evening, late afternoon, something like that. But uh, um, and then Sunday is looking not too bad. So we will uh, just see how it goes because it you know changes from day to day. But that is your Total Media Radio weather forecast where you can download that t Total Media Radio app on your phone and listen to the radio wherever you are in the world. Absolutely. It's funny, I've talked to people who have been like, hey, I was in Belize or I was in Costa Rica or I was in Jamaica and I was listening to you guys the other day. I'm like, that's, that's cool. pretty cool. That is. Didn't even think anything about that, but yeah. So people can tune in and uh, of course on our Facebook feed as well. But uh, pretty easy to just hit that app on your phone and have that come on. It is. So. We're international, baby. That's right. And it just it, it takes like one second to download that app. It doesn't take any it's, time at all. It's a really convenient app. I like it a lot. It is. It's super user friendly. It like is. You're, you're not having to go through a bunch of buttons or anything like that. No, so, yep. not at all. Yep. Um, OK, so what else is in the news besides um, your court stuff? I know. So we have um, an exciting thing coming up here in Jackson on Friday. As many of you know, um, the movie Holler is playing out at the Tri-City Theater. And it was written and directed by Jackson's own Nicole Regal. And Nicole is such a sweet girl. and. Um, it's a really cool movie. Jamie and I watched it last night, and uh, it's, it's pretty good. Um, and we're so proud of Nicole. It's like local girl does real good stuff, and uh, can't be more proud of her. Um, but this Friday, and, and of course you're welcome to go see the movie anytime, but this Friday Nicole will actually be here in town and be doing kind of a question and answer session out at the movie theater. So. Yeah. Do you have the times of, of when that, um, because there's going to be, I think, two showings on Friday. Yeah. One, uh, four, five, something like that, and then. This says that the Q&A will take place on June 18th after the showings at 4.45 p.m. and 8 p.m. Okay. Yeah. Very good. So and, that will um, be exciting. I want to say, too, that our editorial intern, Trevor Bailey, <clears throat> has been covering this. Um, we got him set up with contacts for um, Nicole's, uh, I don't know, marketing director or something like yes, that. Yes, yeah. So Her people called our people, yeah, or basically. vice versa. <laughs> and uh, Trevor's done a good job covering this. He's going to actually be there. Um, he's going to be the one conducting the Q&A. Oh, cool. With Nicole. Very so good. He'll be the one doing the questions. Um, so yeah, I want to give him, him uh, some credit for that. He's, he's really doing a good job overall, but with something like this, it's cool to get him the opportunity to do a new story like this because it's not all that common that you get to, no. to cover something like this. Yeah, so. it's really neat. And um, again, I wasn't, um, I did watch the movie last night, wasn't uh, sure what to expect. I thought it was really, really well done. Um, it is so interesting just to see, I mean, every scene's like something familiar. Oh really? Oh. I was going to. I was going to ask. I saw a shot of the police department. And yep. I saw the interview with, um, oh, the assistant superintendent. Yep. Hemsley. Yep. Yeah. It's funny. The opening scene. Uh, Jamie's like, "Where's?" I'm like, "It's our back alley." Really? Yeah. The opening scenes in our back alley, right here, oh, wow. behind this building. And I, um, I was like, because I, I can remember pulling in when they were filming that, and I was like, "Oh." 
Huh. And, you know, you see Sher the back of Sherman Williams, you see the back of this building, you see all of that. And they, they use this alley a couple times in, within the movie, yeah. So you're, <laughs> you're like, oh my gosh, we just kick it right off with the, the alley in the back of the building. So I won't tell you much more than that, but you will see many, many familiar scenes. You will also see many, many familiar faces. Yeah, like I said, Joe, Joe Hemsley's in there. He I is. saw that. Um, um, one of my good buddies from high school is in it a lot, uh, which I didn't know. So oh, wow. it was fun to see him uh, in the plant that they work at. Um, and then uh, our good friend Lisa Parks. Many of you know Lisa from Kroger yeah. and whatever. And I didn't know. And Jamie was like, I think that's Lisa Parks. I was like, no, it is not. And he was like, no, I really think it. I said, well, it sounds like Lisa Parks. And uh, at the end, we watched the credits, and it, and it is. I was like, oh, my gosh, how fun. So, um, yeah, you see a lot of things. There was, um, there's six cents cans and beer cans and bottles in the movie. Um, wow. So, yeah, lots of neat local things that you will see throughout the movie that you're like, know where that is, know where that is. So it was mostly in Jackson and Chillicothe? Because I yeah, saw that very, they had mead. Very much. Okay. I saw the mead plant or whatever it's called now. Uh, the one thing I will tell you, and I was telling James this earlier, and I don't want to give like away everything, but this isn't giving away anything. It's almost hard to to watch because they flip back and forth between Jackson and Chillicothe so much. Like she'll be walking down the street in Chillicothe and turn a corner and be here in Jackson. Oh yeah. Because it's, they use scenes from both, but it's set in Jackson. Yeah. But they use like houses and housing rows and things like that and uh, the, the mead plant in the background there and, and chill coffee. So it's so funny you turn the corner and it's like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so that's hard. Like you got to get your mind wrapped around that for a minute. You're like, she was just running down the street and chill coffee and now she's out in front of Belicio <laughs> or, you know, whatever it is. So. But it was, it was, it's really, really good. And um, I just love Nicole so much and I love her family so much they're such good people and um, so proud of her right. for accomplishing I mean like I was telling Jamie I said I mean logistically how do you make a movie like how do you cast how do you get the money to do it how do you put all of this together and this has been ongoing for quite a while I remember right. years ago hearing yeah. about this and it just now got bought I mean, yes. the movie rights just got bought, so this is a long time coming. So cool. And I'm just like, my gosh, how does she know how to do all of this? Um, what so, a cool job. Yeah, yeah, right? Like, just not a lot of folks out there can, can put that title behind their name, you know? Movie director, writer, producer, right. all of that, you know? I look forward to seeing it. Um, it's really good. You'll like it, it. The one thing I wanted to ask her, and maybe I'll go to that Friday, and you know, ask or ask uh, Trevor to ask on my behalf. Uh huh. But does it cast? I know the whole premise of the movie is kind of casting this area in a negative light. See, and I've heard some criticism about that, and I didn't, I didn't take it that way. Okay. Okay. Um, I just took it as one girl's one girl's journey to make something better of herself. That's good. Then, then, but I don't, I didn't take it as the whole area is this, this way. Well, that's good because a lot of times when movies about Appalachia in general get made, it's by someone who isn't really from the area at all anyway. Sure. So we're all just kind of, we all have the same West Virginia accent <laughs> and we all smoke meth. <laughs> right, and, and live in a cabin in the woods with no indoor plumbing. Right, yeah. yeah. We've never yeah, seen an airplane or, you know fancy movie pictures or anything like that but this this is from somebody who's actually you know, yeah. from here yes obviously she left here but I mean I, I just think that's 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 a good thing there are always going to be negative connotations with you know sure a I poverty think, stricken area but I don't know I feel like um, that's just my opinion um, maybe you'll watch it and think something completely different and that's that's totally fair and I have read some of the you know comments on social media of course and all of that of you know well I didn't particularly care for the way our area was represented and I just I feel like it's one family's struggle is is what it's talking about and we all you know 
everybody knows a girl just like Ruth. Yeah. Um, and you hope that she makes it out. Yeah. And but it's fun. Like there are some like actors in the movie. You're gonna be like, how did she get? Like there's one in particular. I was like, how did she get that actress in the movie? I, I'm not gonna give it away, but I was like, holy moly! I mean, this girl's like up there. So I was really surprised. So I was like, it was really neat. So anyway, I didn't mean to dwell on that. Other than That's... I'm so proud of Nicole. I I'm just I. So proud of her, and um, she's almost my age. She just graduated two years before I did. Yep, can't. There's there's the uh, trailer, and uh, Jessica Barden is the kind of the lead actress there. Her name's Ruth in the movie, and uh, she does a really good job. She's funny and cute and sassy and all of those things all at, all at once. So yeah, thanks, Jenna. Very cool. Yeah. Much appreciated. So those times again are 4.45 and 8 o'clock. That's oh. when the Q&A session will be held at Tri-City Theater oh. with our own <laughs> Trevor Bailey. Yeah, no, that's exciting and we cannot wait for um, that to happen. And I think it's really cool that Nicole is taking the time to get on a jet airplane yeah. and fly across the country to yeah. come hang out with us here locally because she is a very, very busy girl. She's entered into a lot of film festivals. You know, she's traveling with that. She's traveling promoting the movie um, all over the place. And um, she's taken time to, to come over here and we appreciate it. And it's a limited opening. So, I mean, it's cool that she picked to, she, to show She made it sure we were able to get it. And in Portsmouth and in the area, so yeah. Yeah, very cool, very, very cool stuff. Um, a couple of things. So we had Louie, the library dog, here yesterday oh, cool. talking about fun things going on at the Jackson City Library. And uh, if you need more information on that, just uh, stop in, give them a call, or you know, visit their social media, and they'll let you know what all is going on. Lots and lots of kid programs over the summer. But um, I did want to go over a couple of uh, ones at the Wellston Library. Okay. Um, this says event today, so I assume... James, do you know of anything about this? He must not be listening. It says event today. I assume that's today. This is today? Yes. Okay. I was just making sure I didn't say something was today and it was like yesterday or whatever. No, it is there. Two showings today. Okay, two showings at the Wellston Public Library today. So grab your preschoolers at 10.30 to 11.30 um, the summer reading program doing Magic Nate, a blend of magic and comedy. And that's for your three to five year olds from 1030 to 1130 today. There he is. Hmm. And if they were not in kindergarten this past school year, uh, this will be the program they attend. No registration is required. Please come out. Um, then K through fifth grade, that program will be from one to two. So probably, you know, do a, couple, a little bit different program for the older kids. Um, and again, that is at the Wilson Public Library. No registration is required today. So Magic Nate, 1030 to 1130 for the three to five year olds, uh, K through fifth for the one to two year old, or, or at one to two p.m. for that. Um, and they are also, that's more about that, so yeah. Lots of great stuff going on today at the library, and don't say you don't have anything fun to do. Exactly. If you're a preschooler. If you're a preschooler. Hey, you can be K through fifth, too. I don't think, I think they'd bounce our butts right out of there. What yeah, do you I don't think, think there's a, an adult magic show down there today. Shit. Every day is an adult magic show. I know, right? <laughs> an adult something show, yeah. but we won't say that word. <laughs> um, so... Have you gone through the, you haven't been married yet, have you? No. Okay, so, but he has a really sweet little girlfriend. I do. I'll probably marry that one. Yeah. No, I really will. I am. <laughs> Not probably. You've been warned, <laughs> sister. <laughs> she's sweet. No, she's a really good good person. And um, so there is a, a lady getting married that, so this Reddit thing, I occasionally come across these articles about Reddit and, and basically people post on there like, hey, what do you think about this? 
It's an online forum. A lot of people talk about um, dates or weddings or weird things that's happened, like with weddings or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So this lady in Australia shared a Facebook post about the gifts she expects to receive at her wedding. That she expects to receive. She expects to receive at her wedding. Okay. So <laughs> they have got screenshots of her Facebook post and it listed off 10 potential gift options and other stringent gift guidelines that she wants guests to adhere to. <laughs> So she says, hey everyone, so we are all aware my wedding's coming up. I've already set out the invitations, blah, blah, blah. I would like to announce our gift registry. To those coming to my wedding, there are a list of gifts that you can bring. You must, capital, choose from the list or consult me first. No exceptions. Wow. Literally. I feel bad for this guy that she's marrying. Me too. <laughs> um, so each of her gifts the minimum the couple is requiring, are you ready for this, is their guests to spend $350 or more on wow. KitchenAid appliances, including stand mixers, blenders, and similar items. She pointed out that kitchen accessories such as aprons or spatulas are not, will not be accepted as gifts, not suitable. That's wow. on the low tier. So here, here's ideas for you now. Okay. <laughs> Next tier was a gift spending minimum of $400, which could be offered in cash. Oh. Or gift cards at Saks, Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom, Calvin Klein, Whole Foods, Sprouts, or she'd settle for J.C. Penny if it was like $400. Yeah, she'll lower herself to J.C. Penny standards. She will. The same spending amount can be extended to any, quote, Korean or Asian beauty products or, quote, high class paintings. High Why would you want paint. anyone to buy you a painting? <laughs> <clears throat> um, three gifts of the bride named had no price attached to them, but included Gucci, a Louis Vuitton, or any other designer purse that receives the bride's approval. I mean, well, thank God it's for the couple. Yeah. New floor tile for their entire house. <laughs> or a new car or anything in relation to the care of her new car. Wow. How many people did she uh, invite to this wedding? Because she might be able to retire. I does it say... I hope no one shows up. This lady seems I wouldn't. I couldn't afford to. I don't know, but... Um, then she went on to say, with her Facebook post, that she'll accept gifts with a lower retail as long as she's told in advance. <laughs> Remember to reply to apply early if you don't want to get me a Gucci purse or anything you don't want to get. Thanks, love. I've never seen such an entitled person in all my life. I have no idea what to even say about that. I hope she gets like 45 toasters. Just I feel like best. I would want to take $350 in pennies and like just <laughs> wheel it in, in and, and throw it in the middle of her dance floor and walk <laughs> out and be like, deuces. <coughs> wow. You entitled little snitty snit. I wonder how her husband's feeling about all this, or soon to be, maybe. maybe I don't back know. Out. Sounds like a bit of a control freak. I mean, I have no idea what you would even do to, I, I don't even know. What's the point in even getting somebody a gift if you have to run it by them first to make sure that it's up to their standards? Right? Like, I understand gift registries. I understand, yeah. like, I understand that. But I don't understand, like, my gift registry is $300 or more. Yeah, never or heard $350 that or That's more. That's a new one. So, yeah. Ideas for you. <laughs> yeah. You'll settle for that $350 KitchenAid stand mixer. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't think that's how that's going to go. Uh, <laughs> 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 like, what happened to the old uh, $25 Walmart gift card? Here you go. Happy marriage. Uh, we're probably just going to go to the courthouse. So. Hey, that's even better. Yeah. Throw a little party. Have some fun. Yeah. Yep. There will be no big to do. Well, I don't know. After after your your well, lady friend reads this, <laughs> I'm gonna send it to her. Do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, I'll put all those ideas in her head. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna kill me. Oh my gosh. So yeah, that actually is a thing. Um, also, this is very disheartening for me because I like hummus. Do you like hummus? I do. Do you like hummus? Are you about to tell me something gross? Yes. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something bad about hummus and you're going to be so sad. It actually can be harmful to your health. Why? I know, right? How can hummus be harmful to your health? Oh, this is chickpeas. There's a lot of onomatopoeia going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is, they're saying that the not so well known fact about uh, hummus is that it contains um, extreme amounts of fiber and can cause gastrointestinal inflammation if you eat too much of it because of all the fiber in it. That makes sense. Um, it's made from chickpeas, which are a legume. Um, these can be hard to digest for many people and induce GI inflammation. Hmm. Um, they are pretty dense. Yeah. I mean, I, I could see where they're coming from on this, but it's yeah. just really, but, and it, it all, which leads to like irritable bowel syndrome, inflammation just within your um, digestive tract. You know, there's all kind of things that that could cause. Right. Um, in addition to the toots. Yeah, definitely. Or the opposite, one yeah. or the other. Um, they say most hummus that's sold commercially contains 0.9 grams of fiber per tablespoon. Um, they say women should eat at least 21 grams of fiber per day. Men should eat 30 grams of fiber per day. Um, but eating more than 70 can cause the serious problem. So we're talking like 0.9%, so almost 1%. Or one gram. It's yeah. almost one gram per tablespoon. You'd so have to eat a lot. You'd have to eat a lot of hummus, I think. Yeah. Well, I guess it depends on what else you eat throughout the day. True, yeah. Um, so yeah, you'd have to, if you were just eating hummus to make yourself sick, you'd have to eat like 75, <laughs> you know, <laughs> tablespoons of hummus to make yourself sick. But I could see where people ate it all the time. Yeah, I used to, but what do you use with yours? What do you uh, dip in it? With hummus, well, we've been trying to do like the low carb thing, so that's kind of counterproductive because hummus does have carbs, but I... When I do go for carbs, I t typically tend to try to do stuff that I know at least is like somewhat healthy. Yeah. Other than we did eat the bag of chili cheese Fritos the other day. Oh yeah, you but gotta do that's, that. That's you know yeah. neither here nor there. <laughs> I tend to like vegetables with it. I like carrots. Yeah. And broccoli. Yeah. And um, I do use pita chips sometimes. But yeah. I think carrots probably my favorite. I like those. Um, I'm not a, like the big fan of like the soft pita chip like just pita bread like I like those like crunchy ones is this the Rita ones or whatever the yeah the crispy ones I like in the those bag. better too yeah so those the are pita kind bread's of kind of hard to chew it is yeah it's rough and it's probably high in fiber too I bet <laughs> yeah but uh yeah so yeah I'm te I tend to go toward more toward the veggies with it as well it's a good you. snack yeah and you don't feel like you're <laughs> being quite so bad no unless you you're eating hummus. 70 plus tablespoons that's right or with just a really big spoon. There right. ought to be tablespoons. Jennifer. Yes. Have you ever had dessert hummus? What? It's a thing. There's such thing what? as chocolate hummus that you can dip like strawberries in and it's actually Ooh. really good. What? Yeah. You is are it, blowing it, my mind right now. Is it made from chickpeas? Sure is. <gasps> this girl chickpeas. is blowing. My, this is why we have interns. That sounds like that would be like a really good consistency too. Like how thick it would be. Yeah. Okay, now I need to go home and make that. Well, let's bring a couple tubs up here and we'll taste test it. Jenna? It's at Kroger, so. If oh, you, they, they have it pre-made? Oh, yeah. If you give me the money, I'll make a trip. <laughs> well, well, we didn't say we were going we no. to give you money. Never mind. <laughs> where is it in, in Kroger? Like, where? 
I think just in the normal like hummus section. It is? I think so. Sweet. Where has this been all my I don't life? Know. I don't really, I don't know. I, I guess mean, I, I just see the roasted red pepper and grab that's it. What, like yeah, that's the same kind I get too. I mean, truthfully, it looks kind of scary because it's brown, so probably <laughs> it doesn't look appetizing. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I promise it's good. I'm going to try that for sure. Oh. I have strawberries at home right now, so. We need to that. taste test this. Definitely. All right, next time I go to Kroger, it's on. Is it really sweet, or is it kind of just, like, middle of the road? Um, I think it depends, like, which brand you get. I've had the dark chocolate one, so it's kind of mild yeah. compared mm-hmm. to, like, normal chocolate. So you just kind of have to expect it to be chocolate and chickpeas. So. Cool. I'm trying to cut back on sugar, so as long as it's yeah. not, like, crazy. Yeah, because if you do, like, dark chocolate, it's going to be a little bit more toward the, like, bitter mm-hmm. side. Hmm. I'm definitely checking that My out. My mind is totally like blown yeah, right now. Yeah, I have no idea that exists. Never heard of such a thing. <sighs> awesome. Thanks, Jenna. Yeah. She saved the day. She did. We talk about hummus all day. <laughs> hey, and then James brought me this. We were talking about this yesterday. This is hilarious. Do you remember, I don't know, you're way younger than me, but do you remember the Garfield phones? Oh, yeah. Like, was that a thing when you were growing up? When their eyes would open when you picked the phone up? Yes. Like, you remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, James found this article, and we were cracking up. So, way back in, like, 35 years ago in France, the shipping container falls off of a boat. Okay and falls into the water and it's such that it's just like we can't get it out it's kind of stuck there they can only get to it when it's like really low tide or high whatever that is when it goes out um so the shipping container (laughs) was full of garfield phones (laughs) nothing more nothing less (laughs) garfield phones So for the past 35 years, this happened in the 80s, there have been Garfield phones literally washing up on the beach, this French beach. For, there they are, there's there's a picture, right there. (laughs) Is that not hilarious? And I bet they had no idea why for the longest time. Correct. That would be fantastic. Like what what kind of sick joke is this that these Garfield (laughs) phones- Why do they keep coming? Yeah. It was a Tyco created gadget. The eyes open, like you said, when the landline receivers picked up. It had once been a household fixture and sold in the 80s. And um, yeah, no one knew about it literally until 2019 <laughs> when a local tipped off a French environmental group about a shipping container circa 1980 that was wedged in a secluded sea cave only accessible at low tide. Um, so, yeah, oh, and someone, the comments are pretty funny. Someone <laughs> said, I'm assuming this shipping container debacle happened on a Monday. Cause Garfield <laughs> Cause hated Monday. Um, so, anyway, yeah. That's crazy. So, for like 35 years, these Garfield phones have been washing up on this beach, and they can't get to the shipping container because it's in this like sea cave thing, and they're just like, well, Garfield it is. I wonder, <laughs> I wonder how many more are in there. You wonder, it's like, you know, clowns in a Volkswagen. Like, <laughs> they just keep piling out. <laughs> like, I don't a, even know. That's a pretty long time for those to be washing ashore. It is. What I would like to know is how many, how many have been washed yeah. up, you know, on the shore. Um, but it just says how, you know, how long it's been happening, but it doesn't say how many. Um, yeah. So as long as I've been alive. There have been yep. Garfield phones washing yep. ashore in France. Actually, they're saying thousands. Thousands. <laughs> so. So we're talking like one of those gigantic. Like a containers. giant shipping container. Wow. Full yeah. of Garfield phones. Yes. The demand was that high at one point for Evidently. Garfield phones. Evidently. And so they they say uh, the the container is currently inaccessible, so they have no. Uh, idea how many more are in there won't that be a sad day when they stop yeah yeah because i feel like people will just go to the beach just to find one (laughs) i i wonder i wonder how 
far underwater it is. Like if you could get down there with like a scuba suit. I don't know. Check it out. That's a fair question. I don't know. And I wonder like, in what kind of shape are those phones? Cause like that one that Jenna just put up, it yeah. actually looked decent. Yeah. Like it didn't look like it was in horrible shape. Well, so being in the ocean for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Do they work or do they not work or what's the deal? I want to see, I want to see these. Somebody's going to be scooping them out, selling them on eBay. I know, right? <laughs> Might have a little water damage, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. But other than that, it's brand new. <laughs> I didn't have one of those, but I had a di I had a similar kind of. I think everybody did back in the late '80s and early '90s. Yeah, I had the phone that was like clear and it had all the colorful parts in it. Yeah, all the wires. Uh, you and could stuff. see all the wires and everything, and then it, like they would light up when it rang. I remember those. Yeah, which is really good because if I'm telling on myself. If you wanted to talk to your friends late at night, you could turn the ringer off, but you could still see it like flashing, so you could know to answer your phone. Jenna's going, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, we used to have landline phones. We had phones. landline phones. <laughs> With cords and all. With cords. You act like I'm 10, I know things. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when they, uh, well, did you, you guys probably had a rotary phone too. I had a rotary phone. We did have yeah. a rotary phone that makes it and it took like 72 minutes to, to god forbid someone's number have a lot of zeros in it yeah or nines Cause, yeah because you were in some serious trouble <laughs> those were the days not really no they it's funny did you have you ever seen a rotary phone jenna i think so she thinks so oh they were classic man yeah well yeah the cord on that was only like that long. And yeah. then they came out with the ones where you had like the super long cords that you could walk in like all through your house with Yeah, it. you could walk through your house for, you know, go to the bathroom for privacy. And then the first cord, <laughs> the first cordless phones, like if you walked 20 feet past where like, the receiver was. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like the Zach Morris phone. It had like the big wire yeah. antenna that you had to pull up. Weighed like 10 that? pounds, yeah. 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 <laughs> but no, you know what, as, as, early as so we built our house like 17 18 years ago and when we built our house i had to have it wired for like cable in every room for well dish for you know phone in every room you know that kind of thing while they were building it and now it's like you just buy one if you have a landline phone even yeah. you buy one and there's like all these just remote ones that go off from it but now I think everyone just pretty much uses their cell phones anyway. Yeah, I think, I, my, like, my mom has a landline still. And all the only people that call it are telemarketers. That's a, we have a, honestly, we have a landline, and it's just because it runs my um, security system. Yeah. And I need to call them and figure out how to bypass that and get rid of it, because you're exactly right. And the phone rings at the same time every day, and, like, my uh, my phone says, call from... Potential scammer. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting to be that way with cell phones too, though. It is. It's bad. It's getting bad. I'll tell you about your extended car warranty. Right, or your MasterCard or Visa something something. Or there's been some illegal activity with your social security number. Yes, I'm calling from the Social Security Administration. Sure. I need to, okay. mm, I'll bet you are. But yeah, if your name if your name is not in my phone, I'm not answering it. No, I'm the same way. Unless I know it's like a local business and I know the number off the top of my head, then I'll be like, okay, or the city calling me or something. Well, it used to be you could tell by the prefix, but now they've, you know, made they've it They've hijacked them all, yeah, all the numbers. It'll yeah. come from a regular number that could be anybody here local. Well, my dad had this happen to him, and I've talked to other people that had this happen. He had people calling his house like when he had a landline phone, mm -hmm. and they were like cussing him out, like, stop calling me. And he was like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm just a guy, this is my house phone. You called me and you keep calling me from this number and it, some telemarketer, some scam thing had somehow hijacked his number. Yeah, spoofing. And it looked like he was call like so people were calling back. Yep. So he had to literally get with the cable company or whoever he had the phone with at the time and they had to work and work and it took like a week to get it undone to where they couldn't use it anymore. Yeah, that's uh, that's spoofing. Yeah, they can so hijack crazy. anybody's number. That's happened to me before too. Someone will call and I'll call the number right back and I'll say, did you call? No, I didn't call you. Yeah. So you know, okay. 
either they're lying, which I doubt, because I have no right. idea who this person even is. Right. But yeah, they can hijack anyone's number now. Yep. It's very strange. Very. Oh, well. We need to go back to the rotary phones. Right. <laughs> Problem hey, solved. Hey, there was a time, we're teaching Jenna stuff, there was a time when you didn't know who was calling you. No. You had terrifying. no caller ID. And if you didn't want to be around, you went like this. And you locked the door, mm -hmm. and you didn't exist for however long you didn't want to exist. Mm -hmm. And I miss that. You took your phone off the hook. I miss it. Yeah. You took your phone off the hook, and you're right, and you hid. Yep. And that was fine. Mm hmm We should get back to that. I miss that. I miss that a lot. Because now if I turn my phone off, it feels good. But then when I turn it back on, I've got like ding, 90 ding, toys. Ding. You know, yeah. you can't get away from it. You're, you're right. I, uh, yeah, I don't, it's... It's rough. Technology's great and, and sad all at the same time. Well, it was like, I was asking Jenna, so we were signing a birthday card today up here and I was writing in cursive and it dawned on me. So I was asking Jenna, I said, were you of the generation where they stopped teaching cursive? And you said that you actually did learn it in the third grade, but then like after that they quit teaching it. Yeah. So, but I think they've now since start, restarted teaching cursive again, I think. I think so. I'm like, what did you do your whole third grade year? Because that's all I remember doing in the third grade was reading the Iliad and the Odyssey and cursive. Yeah. Yeah. That's we it. learned it about the same time. You read the Odyssey in the third grade? Yeah. Isn't that strange? Really weird. Yeah. I feel like I read it my sophomore year, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't do anything like that until we were in high we school. Did. But we were doing, like, uh, Beatrix Potter and stuff like Peter Rabbit and going to plays. Yeah. I had pretty cool teachers. But yeah, the, the cursive thing, I remember how to do it. I don't write in cursive. I you write don't. in some like print height, like some hybrid, hybrid of yeah. it. Yeah. But I, I think still a lot of people to. do. I know how to. Yeah. I don't know how to do this new math that they teach now. <laughs> so when my kid goes into school, um, I'm really behind the eight ball. Well, that's why you have my mom's, teenagers. My mom's too. been a teacher for a long time, so maybe she's up on it. I mean, I'm sure she yeah. could take take the reins, but I don't know how to do matrices or whatever that is. No idea. Yeah. All those geometric geometry proofs. That, that always just seemed like the dumbest thing to me. Proving geometry. I'm like. Wasn't ever a fan. No. I was good at math, but. Yeah. I mean, the last math class I took in high school was applicable only if you were going to be a rocket scientist. Pretty much, yes. Which is calculus. Yeah. yeah. The, I will say that when I got to college, because I did take the most advanced math class that we had at the time, when I got to college, they put me in a math class and then they gave me a te like the first test and it was like I, so easy. Yeah. And they were like, oh yeah, you need to get out of here. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> this is a waste. So I was like, woo, I didn't have to take math in college, which is fantastic, either. but. Um, I had to take logic though, which is basically just math without numbers. Okay, you yeah, that would be that, but that would be rough. It was rough. That I got an rough. A though. I did. Good job. And it was taught Proud by a TA, cause so oh. I was much more comfortable with that. Yeah. I don't know. Jenna's headed to college, so we'll have to find out from her. She'll have to report back on what it is that they're teaching now. Where are you going to college? Bowling Green. Nice. Yep. So we're super excited. We don't want. We'll miss her, but you know, it's we got all summer with her, so that's yeah. good. We'll torture you a little bit for you, yeah. Her parents are um, trying to figure out what the heck to do because uh, once she goes to college, they're going to be like, what? I know what they're going to be doing. Party. No. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Well, we probably ought to get out of here for the day. Uh, did want to thank Mark Carmen, the gang at Carmen's Used Cars. Uh, Jamie's pickup truck's a bit under the weather, as it always is, but it's really under the weather right now. So I need to call Mark and uh, don't forget they do have that service department yeah. and um, they can do something as simple as an oil change on up to, you know, transmission work, anything like that that you need done. So give them a call out there. Also want to thank the whole Zaffle family and the gang at uh, the filling station here in Jackson, the store at Broadway and Penn in Wellston and Quick Stop here, home of the crispy crunchy chicken, which is fantastic. And if you have not tried it, it is should be on your lunch menu today. It's very good. So good. So, all right. Uh, are we all good? She says we're good. 
Anything else you wanted to talk about? I don't think so. He's like, let me get out of here. I got work <laughs> to do. Well, thanks for hanging with me today. It's always thanks fun for talking to you. Me. It is. I always have fun. Yeah. So uh, have a great day, everyone. Weather is going to be absolutely gorgeous today. It'd be a great day to get out and get a hike in or uh, some yard work, something like that. Only mid 70s today, so we'll take it. Have a great day, everyone, and we'll be right back here tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.